Measuring about 75 miles across, the Big Island is just that, big. So where you base yourself is important to the activity of the day. We've chosen the Big Island's sunny west coast as a base. It'll make a long day trip to the volcano, but the sunshine and beaches here at Hapuna Beach Resort will more than make up for that. Measuring 13,796 feet, Mauna Kea is the world's tallest mountain, even taller than Mount Everest when measured from the sea floor. The peak's unique location and high elevations surrounded by open oceans makes it an ideal place to study the stars. On the summit, 13 observatories, including one of the most powerful telescopes in the world, study the galaxy. Just northwest of the peak is the Kahala Coast and the Mauna Kea Resort area. Set on a picturesque cove lined with a gorgeous white sand beach, the Mauna Kea Resort was constructed by Lawrence Rockefeller in the 1960s as the island's first luxury hotel. The grounds of the hotel house a unique collection of Asian artwork, like these large stone and bronze Buddhas. We're staying at Mauna Kea's newer sister resort, Hapuna Beach Prince Hotel. The wide sand beach and calm waters make this an excellent place to base ourselves for day trips to the rest of the island. Today we're heading down the Kona Coast to discover some of the Big Island's sometimes tumultuous history. Along the way, we plan to stop at one of Kona's infamous coffee plantations for a taste of the good stuff. This is Kailua Kona, a town sprung from an ancient retreat for Hawaiian royalty. Quaint wooden buildings line the waterfront drive around Kailua Bay where outrigger canoes share the waters with glass-bottom boat rides and submarine tours. Evidence of Hawaii's multifaceted history is prevalent here. Hawaii's first church. A stone palace used as a royal residence in the 19th century. And perhaps most important, a reconstruction of King Kamehameha's personal temple where he died in 1819. King Kamehameha's temple is quite a sight. The stone platform holds a thatched roof hut with silky white banners flapping in the wind. It's surrounded by tall wood poles carved with faces that seem to say hello. Aloha. Aloha. It's a nice retreat from the sometimes crowded streets of the tourist areas. The laid back town of Kailua Kona is very relaxing. A broad boardwalk makes for a great stroll next to the ocean with lots of interesting historical sites along the way. Seeing all this history has made me want to learn more, so we're going to head south to the City of Refuge. But first, a quick stop at a Kona coffee plantation for a cup of joe. Located in the steep hills above the Kona coast, Kona Blue Sky Coffee Plantation is set on 400 acres of rich volcanic soil. The seasonal rainfall, sunny mornings, and misty afternoons provide the perfect environment for growing the superior Arabica bean. Visitors to the plantation can watch a video and take a tour of the grounds to learn how coffee is grown and harvested. So when you pick the red cherry, you take the outer coating off of the bean, and that's called husking the cherry. Before getting a taste of the coffees in the visitor center. Even Nathan gets in on the action and a jump start to the day. <laughs> Revved up on coffee, we're ready to face off with these guys. Located 20 miles south of Kona on the Big Island's west coast, Pu'u Honua'o Honaunau is a national park with ancient royal grounds where the Ali'i, or chiefs of Kona, once lived, and a place of refuge. This place of refuge provided safety for Hawaiians who broke kapu, the many laws that governed ancient Hawaiian society. 
If the Kapu breaker could reach the place of refuge, the offender would be forgiven and free to leave without fear of punishment. The place of refuge also served as a safe zone for non-combatants during battles. One of the best preserved Hawaiian sites, the City of Refuge, is amazing. In a peaceful location beside the turquoise waters of the Pacific, I can see why the ancient royals chose this place. The beautiful swaying palms in this grove, the powder white sand and the calm, clear waters of the cove. The kids love discovering all the different faces carved in wood around the temple here. We even get a chance to view a newer one being carved. I can't believe they carved them by hand with a chisel. On the refuge side of the park beyond the royal grounds, you're reminded of the island's volcanic core. Lava rock. Lava rocks are strewn all over the place. The kids even find an ancient game similar to checkers played with lava rocks. With the interactive exhibits, the recreated structures, and the rugged volcanic terrain, it's easy to get a sense of both Hawaii's natural and tribal history. One of the state's top attractions, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, offers visitors a first-hand look at the dramatic landscapes formed from the volcanic activity. The park encompasses a diverse range of environments from the tropical beaches to the summit of the Earth's most massive volcano. Detailed maps provide a great overview of the volcanoes and help the kids visualize how these islands were formed. At just a mere 500,000 years old, the Big Island is the newest volcano on the island chain. It's got the largest volcano, the largest active volcano in the world. The constant flow of lava is changing the landscape all the time. This island sits on the Pacific Plate, which is moving off to the northwest. When this island is done being built, a new island is already forming just offshore. Volcano. Market is one of the coolest kids hotels around. The Volcano Lodge sits right on the edge of a steaming crater. After a quick bite at the hotel, we're heading out into the park. And we saw the whole of the volcano right on the, pressure, on the edge of the volcano. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park has over 100 miles of hiking trails that vary in difficulty from walking trails around the crater rim to backcountry overnights and hikes to the summit of Mauna Loa. We're in the rainforest walking into a tunnel that's made out of lava rocks. Starting right on Crater Rim Drive, the Lava Tube Trail is a 20-minute loop that's perfect for small kids. It winds down the side of a crater through tropical rainforests before entering a large tunnel formed by hardened lava. Oh, look at down there, Seamus. Oh. Don't drop your flashlight, Seamus. Come on, Seamus. Thurston Lava Tube was created hundreds of years ago when liquid lava continued to flow through an area where a crust had formed. When the lava drained from the crust, the tube was formed. The Thurston Lava Tube offers visitors a chance to experience the effects of lava flow firsthand. Even though it's lit up inside the lava tube, I'm glad we brought the flashlights for the kids, and it gives them a sense of control. This is kind of spooky. And they have fun flashing them around, lighting up the darker areas. With lava rocks surrounding us, roots hanging from the ceiling, water dripping, the lava tube trail has given us a real sense of adventure. The lava tube continues even further with no lights if you really want to put on your explorer's hat. Getting so narrow. 
We made it out, and now it's off in search of more signs of the mysterious volcano in action. In 1982, Kilauea Caldera exploded, sending molten lava across the trails and roads. Visitors can easily access these hardened lava fields along the Crater Rim Drive, or a six-mile hike along the crater floor. It's easy to imagine the lava flowing across the road here. You can see the action in the hardened rock. It looks as if someone spilled pudding and froze it in its place. You can feel the heat of the volcano oozing from tiny caves and crevices in the rock. And whoa, smell that sulfur. Feel that. Nearby, steam still billows from the caldera. A lookout provides an overview of the crater and an excellent vantage point for viewing the steaming sulfur. If you dig down a couple centimeters, the ground actually feels hot. Steam pours out from little holes all around us. Seeing the steam drifting out of the earth and feeling the heat of the volcano, it makes you think about what's under the surface. You can even see a place where the earth was sliced open by seismic activity. Nearby, a museum has a seismograph where tourists can watch the Earth's activity. The museum has exhibits on what's inside the Earth, lava, and Pele, goddess of fire. It also offers a good viewing point for the crater. A trip to the Big Island doesn't always guarantee you're going to see flowing lava. The park rangers have let us know that viewing actively flowing lava from the ground is not possible at this time due to unstable conditions around the current flow. But helicopter tours are available from other parts of the island to view the lava from the air. Although we didn't get to see lava flowing, we definitely saw signs of the volcano in action. Lava tubes, steam vents, hardened lava in huge fields, I've never seen anything like that. With the constant volcanic activity and the flow creating new land all the time, it's like history in the making. The coolest part of the volcano was when I touched the steam vent and I took my hand really fast away because it was so hot. They go through two lava tubes. We could spend lots more time exploring the area, but it's getting late and tonight we have a luau to attend at the Mauna Kea Beach Hotel. It's supposed to be fantastic. During the emu ceremony, we learn all about how the pig is cooked for a luau. Hot rocks line the bottom of a pit where a pig is lowered and covered with tea leaves. Are they lava rocks? They're lava rocks. You got it. Then they bury the pig with sand and let it cook. In the emu ceremony, they unearth the pig, which has been cooked in this underground oven. Uh -huh. We're digging for the pig. Uh huh. He's <laughs> hoping he didn't dig his way out. <laughs> the ceremony was fascinating, and the food looks great. I can't wait to get a taste of all these Hawaiian delicacies. What is that? Boy. Luau is at hotels like this one, Mauna Kea Beach Hotel, allow you to try some of the native Hawaiian foods, like lomi lomi, poi, baked molokai, which is like a sweet potato. And over here, there's chicken luau, which is with the taro leaf and coconut milk. Mmm. Okay, and of course, the star of a show at the Luau, the Kalua Pig. Ready to eat? The food is superb at the Luau, the perfect mix of new tastes and gourmet foods. Nathan likes the poi and... The Kalua Pig, my teeth. 
and the pirate room. I saw a serious dessert table. Can you say sweet tooth? So I think it's time for a trip back to the buffet. Some of the favorite desserts at Luo's include baked banana and coconut, macadamia nut chocolate pie, and coconut halpia cake. Halpia is like a coconut pudding and it's a specialty here in Hawaii. After dinner, we're treated to a wonderful show. A conch shell sounds off, signaling Hawaiian royalty who enter to the sounds of chanting and drums beating in a dramatic sunset ceremony. The sun dips into the ocean as hula dancers take the stage. The kids love watching the show. The bright colors, exotic costumes, exciting dancing, music, and chanting. The dramatic fire dance from Samoa makes quite an impression. Today, we're going to seek out the kids' activities at our hotel. After that excellent luau last night, we're looking forward to an exciting day. The Mauna Kea and Hapuna Beach hotels offer a keiki program where kids do activities like Hawaiian arts and crafts and beach treasure hunts. Kids learn about the island while having lots of fun and meeting new friends. The t-shirts were a big hit. The teacher even wrote their names in a special glow-in-the-dark paint. But now we have an appointment down the road with some Finn friends. Just down the coast from Hapuna Beach is the Hilton Waikoloa Village, a 62-acre resort property connected by a network of open-air canopy-covered boats and air-conditioned trams. The oceanfront sheltered saltwater lagoon offers lots of activities like kayaking and paddle boats. The resort here is huge. The kids like taking the tram and watching the boats going up and down the canals. The path down to the beach winds right under a waterfall along a big lagoon loaded with tropical fish and dolphins. Wow. Dolphin Quest is an interactive experience in which visitors have the opportunity to learn about dolphins in a face-to-face -face encounter in the water. Shaped dorsal fin, dolphins have more of the shark white dorsal fin. After a short lesson about dolphins and marine life, we wade into the water and are introduced to Kaloe. She swims right up to us. The trainer tells us all about dolphins and let us pet her and feed her. This is a herring and this is a capelin for a dolphin. We also feed them squid. We put on snorkels and check out the dolphin below the surface. It's fascinating to see how she moves through the water. It was so incredible to watch these giant creatures glide by us in the water. And petting them was really cool. Their skin was kind of spongy and rubbery. They're so fast and graceful. After playing with the dolphins and learning new tricks, we reluctantly say goodbye. Come your shark aside since we're in Hawaii. Say goodbye, go ahead. Perfect. Give him a big cheer. We learned so much about them and all of Hawaii's marine life. It was a family experience we will always cherish. I snorkeled and saw the dolphins petting them and on their belly. Today we're heading over to the greener east side of the island to discover some of the wonders hidden in this wetter, less traveled part of the island. The first wonder we find is not of the natural type, but made by human hands. Hanakoa'a, a town on the big island's northeast side, is a remnant of the sugarcane days. Lining Main Street, wooden plantation-style buildings hold unique shops and restaurants. Places like Tex Drive-In, which is known for its malasadas. At Tex Drive-In, they make the malasadas fresh every day. It's a popular hangout for the locals and tourists alike. The kids like to watch through the big window as the cook kneads and flours the dough and plops the sweet treats into a huge deep fryer. Just north of Hanakawa'a, the Waipio Valley is a series of seven long, narrow valleys cut deep into the island, surrounded by tall cliffs. Waipio was once home to Hawaii's royalty and was considered sacred. 
Today, the dense jungle is dotted with fields and taro patches and is home to many farmers. Visitors can take tours of the valley in four-wheel drive vans or hike down to the lookout for a fantastic overview. The view over Waipio Valley is dramatic. Cliffs tumble into the ocean and valleys disappear into the jungle beyond. There's a hiking trail to a black beach at the bottom, more signs of this island's recent volcanic history. The road south to Hilo is vastly different from the dry, volcanic west coast. Green vines climb tangles of trees which hang over the top of the road. Bright, colorful flowers grow everywhere, and waterfalls tumble down to foreign rivers that flow under many of the bridges that connect the towns. Ten minutes drive off of Highway 19, Akaka Falls State Park has two dramatic waterfalls. 100-foot Kahuna Falls, and 420-foot Akaka Falls. Both are reachable along a half-mile trail that meanders through verdant jungle punctuated by wild spreads of tropical flowers. Akaka Falls is quite a sight. After hiking a path winding through beautiful green woods, across bubbling streams, and lined with bright red and orange tropical flowers, we arrive at an overlook. Across the valley, a huge waterfall tumbles down a fern-covered cliff. It's got to be as tall as a high-rise building back home. Back on the road to Hilo, we're treated to more fantastic scenery. Hilo is the Big Island's largest town, with a population of almost 50,000, and holds the title rainiest city in the U.S. The main boulevard in town runs between the waterfront and rows of wooden buildings housing shops and markets. Vast grassy parks provide plenty of oceanfront recreation in this city, which retains the air of a small town. We've arrived in time to check out the well-known farmer's market here in Hilo. On one side, locals sell Hawaiian crafts and jewelry, clothing and artwork like paintings, carvings and ceramics. Flower stands here display huge bouquets of tropical flowers in every color under the rainbow. On the other side of the market, farmers sell all sorts of fruits and vegetables, cutting up fresh coconut, sampling white pineapple, and delicious Asian Pacific food. There's even a balloon vendor twisting crazy balloon shapes for the kids. Just outside of Hilo, the Panaiva Rainforest Zoo is home to all sorts of exciting creatures from the jungle. The most popular exhibits at this 12-acre zoo include pygmy hippos and a white Bengal tiger. The zoo also has exhibits on some of Hawaii's endangered species, like the nene bird. The zoo is fun for the whole family. There's a path that winds right through the center of a monkey cage. The monkeys are all around us. There are turtles, frogs, and lizards. We get up close with the water buffalo having his lunch. Buffalo. Hi, buffalo. Today we're going to head to the interior to find out about the Big Island's ranching history. We're taking a horse-drawn wagon tour to get a better view of the vast ranch lands here. Isaac from Kohala Carriages opens up the grounds of Parker Ranch to visitors on a 45-minute tour. 
Okay, Nathan, what I'd like to get you to do is hold these horses for me, and I'm going to close the gate. You're in charge of the horses, okay? okay. Thank you. The wagon winds through the wide open pastures while Isaac weaves tales of Paniolo tradition. Horse drawn wagon tours like this one here at Parker Ranch are a great way for younger kids who are too small for horseback riding to see the wonderful pasture lands on the Big Island. See you all know that? And this is his bit. This is how you steer the horse. The kids love the wagon ride and learning about Hawaiian cowboys. Nathan even gets some cowhand experience up in the saddle. Hey, we've got a cowboy up there. Yeehaw! Back at the hotel, we watch as the sun dips into the ocean on our final day on the Big Island. We've had so much fun here exploring all the Big Island's big attractions. Hiking volcanoes, riding the ranch, coming face to face with Hawaii's history, and discovering the island's contrasting sides. Soaking in the sun and swimming with dolphins on the Kohala coast, and hiking to waterfalls in the jungles near Hilo. Ready for the adventure of a lifetime? Join Travel with Kids for a family adventure in Thailand, Peru, South Africa, Ireland, Fiji, and more. Take advantage of Travel with Kids decades of family travel experience. You decide where to go, we do all the legwork to build your ideal journey. Each Travel with Kids family adventure tour immerses your family in the history, culture, and nature of a destination. Try new foods. Chicken, rice, and olives. And spider. Learn new adventure activities together. Kids make friends with kids. Adults enjoy relaxation time. So this summer, do something different. Join Travel with Kids for a true family adventure. Travel with Kids is now offering family adventure tours. Your family can join our family in exotic locations around the globe. <laughs>